Hello, and thank you for watching Atheist Viewpoint. I'm David Silverman, President of American Atheists, and here with part two of our two-part special on the installation of the Atheist-sponsored monument in Stark, Florida. Today, we're showing you clips from the monument, more clips from the monument's dedication, uh, along with crowd clips and good old-fashioned protesters as well. I'm uh, speaking in front of atheists. Usually I do it behind a computer or my phone. Uh, I'm the founder of North Florida Atheists. Um, through American Atheists and others here, uh, you've all motivated me to become this. Uh, I got in contact with Greg Lammers, uh, forming a uh, affiliation with American Atheists to promote a secular movement in this area of Clay County, Bradford County. I've noticed I've lived here seven years and there's no movement. So <laughs> that's why that's what I want to bring with North Florida Atheists. I want to work with all of you to bring that. Help each other out to promote this cause. And um I don't know, I really didn't have a speech lined up. <laughs> Three minutes. But I also want to work with not only the atheists, but the LGBT community. I'm a big supporter of that, and they've been oppressed just as we have. And in numbers, we're stronger in numbers, and as one of my goals, to continue to push for rights for everyone and equality. Um, and you know, not only you know, we're gonna do, we're not gonna be just activists. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna do some meet up, meet up, and uh, talk, and just get the atheists out, vent. You know, we all need to do that every once in a while, living here. But um, again, Amen. thank you, thank you, everyone, for your help, and uh, look forward to working with all of you, uh, talking with you, and because I am new to this, I will be bugging a lot of you, information legislation, but eager to learn, very passionate about this, and it is the main goal to do this. So I'll shut up now. Thank you. Uh, yes, actually, I'd, I'd like to put a plug in for my local group, because we all rely on local grassroots activism. I'm with the St. Peter's, St. Petersburg Atheist uh, in my hometown. But I do serve on the board of directors, like Brandy, of the Humanists of Florida Association, and also on the board for the National Atheist Alliance of America. Our president couldn't be here today, but I know I speak for him and the entire board when we congratulate Dave Silverman and American Atheists on doing a fantastic job with this monument and with all the work that they do. Uh, one thing that I encourage everyone to do is all of our groups have local meetings, state meetings, national meetings. The best thing to do is to find the groups that meet your needs and support them. Pick one local, one state, one national, or more if you can, but, but find a way to support one of them. Um, if you want to support the Atheist Alliance of America, we'd love to have it. If not, then there's atheists, American atheists. But definitely, we working together and finding common ground is how we make a difference. So 
So thank you very much. As if the Bible was appropriate. <laughs> Apparently they don't want the truth in their school. So we have a couple hundred of them. Take one you when you leave. That's, we had them printed up. They were supposed to go in the schools, but they uh, rejected them. I want you to think about what's happened here today. We, meaning American Indians, are placing a monument to reason right next to that treasonous monument to mindless superstition. Yep. I'm the poker in the eye guy, okay? I say treason is because those who honor those commandments believe that they should adhere to those commandments over and above the Constitution. These people have no allegiance to the country that allows them to freely practice their Bronze Age witchcraft. Got it better. They would see this country turned into a theocracy. Of course, as long as it's their theocracy. What they don't realize that, of course. As a concrete example of that, I have a true story. I was preparing to pick at the National Day of Prayer, or as I call it, the National Waste of Time. <laughs> and I asked the chaplain before our picketing and the event occurred, I said, how do you pick the ministers that will be speaking this day? This chaplain, by the way, earns, earned, in past tense, over $100,000 of taxpayer money. I don't know why either. That's what you said in your own mind, right? I said, how do you, how do you pick these, these people that speak here? He said, he based it upon the activism of the preachers who came to the jails to help out. And I said that there are hundreds of other cults in this country, and he's violating the Constitution by tacitly ignoring some religions and excluding other superstitions, and of course, discounting the millions of atheists in this country. His answer was, Quote, I answer to a higher power. Exactly what we're talking about here. They do not care about the Constitution. God is everything. They would love to see a theocracy established in this country. So we see here, steer, so we hear, so we see here in Stark, the game of whack-a-mole goes on. We win a case here, they pop up a decalogue somewhere else. But this time the chips are falling our way. With the installation of this bench, bench, you're all part of a history today. A march to reason away from superstition begins today. Yes. Have no doubts, religion is on the wane. In fact, I just read the other day that in England, for example, in a recent poll of young people and religion, found that only 25% believe in God, as opposed to 38% who definitely don't. It's exactly flip-flopped. In a recent Pew survey of U.S. adults under 30, fully one-third identified as nuns. How many of us are under, under 30 here? Wow, that's pretty good. Pretty good uh, yeah, that's about right, about one-third. Okay, good for you. 30 decades. Now, I'm supposed to be talking about Flash today, so. Uh, let me start by saying, I grew up in New York. Up there, religion is a sidebar, not a main event. When I moved down here, I was amazed by the number of fishies on the cars, <laughs> the churches on every block, and that huge TBN TV station, and their huge trailer park by I-95. What a trailer park has to do with religion, I don't know, but they're getting it tax-free. The endless Christian radio stations on the dial, and the plethora of televangelists on TV, especially on Sunday. I began to look around for rational people. I found that atheists of Broward County was in existence. And that's what we call that. That was about 10 years ago. In fact, it was 10 years ago. We were a tiny group meeting in a bar. We had aspirations, but never in our wildest dreams did we think we'd be on a first name basis with Dave Silverman, Aaron Ra, Richard Dawkins, Todd Stiefel, Lou Pignani, or James Randi, all of whom have had some connection with our group so far. These were stars in our atheist galaxy at the time. Today, we're right here with these guys and helping out the atheist movement. We grew and we decided to incorporate to a 501c3 organization. Are all of you leaders of 501c3? Anyone's not? Find out how to get, get that done then. We can help, of course. We're now Flash, of course, Florida Atheist and Secular Humanist, and our numbers exceed 500. Between 50 and 60 people attend our meetings. We have four different meetings. 
We recently had a summer solstice on the beach. 70 people attended that. So we are on the move, so to speak. All right, through the years, we've done a lot of things. We've done a roadside cleanup. You know what that is? You get permission from the town, you get a little sign that says you guys clean up the road, and clean up the road. Uh, we had the first atheist billboard in Florida which said, quote, being a good person does not require God. Don't believe in God, you're not alone. I cannot tell you the brouhaha that that created because of a person by the name of Big Mama. Okay? If you get a chance, uh, Google it. You'll see it's on YouTube. We've done a Constitution Day with CFI, a Darwin Day with CFI, Carl Sagan Day, as Jeanette said, the first Carl Sagan Day. Uh, we do winter and summer solstices every year. We do astronomy nights, movie nights. We've done a field trip to see uh, Religious, great film. Yes. Field trip to see Lamar in person. We had the rapture party, that was a blast. <laughs> well, again, with CFI and other groups. We never could get that thing to, I had a, blow up, a couple of blow up uh, balloons and it was supposed to be a person blowing up to heaven and it never did go off the ground. I don't know. <laughs> we had a skeptics fair. At a skeptics fair at a college, we're sitting there at the table and this college student comes up to me and says, I don't believe in science. What in the hell do you say to that? I don't believe that you're a college student, you don't believe in science. This is the kind of mentality that all of us are up against. What the hell is I have no idea. <laughs> there, there is no discussion once somebody says that to you, they just walk away, that's all. You can't, you can't deal with that. We've had bowling nights, a rapture party, uh, and uh, we'd like to thank Harold Camp Campy for that rap rapture party, by the way. Did you have a heart attack or a stroke after that? <laughs> we protested the, the Bush uh, visit to Dade College on 07, uh, National Day of Prayer on 09, 10, and 11, and as an aside to that, they did not hold the National Day of Prayer on a public property anymore. They used to hold it in the public service building. They did not hold it there this year. We, hope, we want to hope that, we want to think that it was because of us, but they didn't. We had a great debate called, is religion good for society? Now, we had, I don't know if you are aware of Calvary Church, one of the largest churches uh, in that area. I mean, they have thousands of people. And they got their best apologist to come and debate one of our members, Lance Bush, who's a, he's a philosopher. Philosophy neighbor. Philosophy major. Is that water? <laughs> I'm a Republican uh, responded to the president. <laughs> Lost my place. Right. Great debate. Uh, 300 people attended with the uh, with the cooperation of CFI uh, campus group. One or two were from Calvary Church. Now we they told us that they advertise this thing. They put it through their newsletter and you know, on their all of their publications. Two or three people on their side show up. The rest of us were all atheists or free thinkers. And an aside to that is after this, after we thoroughly trounced this this apologist, he came back and said, "Wow, this is great. Let's do it again." <laughs> it's like we were at the same debate. We were not. I encourage you to engage apologists because they are starting from a position of weakness. Ah, we've also picketed the Westboro Baptist Church when they were going to, co to come down to picket a gay play in Fort Lauderdale. We arrived, and so did lots of other groups, I guess LGBT groups also. About 250 people were there to protest against their protest. They never showed up. Just a little bit of background. Okay. Flash was part of a broad-based coalition of organizations that included PTA members, union members, student groups, CFI, ACLU, and etc. We, we were organized to stop the inclusion of intelligent design, mm -hmm. aka creationism, in the Florida science curriculum. Thirteen of our members uh, testified in the state science cur curriculum town meeting in Miramar in 08. So Flash has done a lot of things. And frankly, with a minimal budget. Only after the RAM Regional Atheist Meeting in December of 2011 did our budget get healthy. 
because of Lou Apignani's $10,000 challenge, which was he would give us $10,000 if we raised $10,000. We didn't quite make it, we got to $4,000, but he gave us the $10,000 anyway, so. We were operating at that time with a budget of about $14,000, which is the most money we ever had. We're still operating off of that money a year and a half wow. afterwards, plus a couple of donations here and a couple of hundred dollars here and there. Money has always been our problem. As an example of what we're facing, if you look around and see one of these billboards, each one of those billboards cost between three and five thousand dollars minimum per month. So you, when you see these little babies and little abortion uh, billboards, fourteen of them is what I counted on the way up. See, somebody's paying for those billboards. Now I don't know if that's what they cost off of the turnpike. I'm giving you a basic idea. Some of them are less, but a lot of them are more. I think a American Atheist paid like twenty-five grand for theirs. These things are not cheap. When you, as soon as you, everyone you see put up by a church, someone is paying for that billboard. And we're operating on a budget of 14000 Okay. Uh, you know how those Christians are so persecuted. So how do we fight back? Well, I like to put up a billboard next to every one. They call us atheists the fools. Well, you're calling Mark Twain, Clarence Darrow, Isaac Asimov, even Larry King, Frank Sinatra, all of those are fools. I don't think they realize how many people, famous people, and influential people, have or have been atheists. And what about those TV shows? All they do is ask for money. If you ever watch them, you watch the char run going by. Okay, we need this building fund. Okay, we need this plane. Okay, we need this Rolex, Rolex for our leader. That's all they do is ask for money. We'd like to have a TV show. Yeah, I know we have one on the net, but if it didn't happen on TV, it doesn't happen. I'd like to have a mainstream, primetime TV show. Okay, today we see a lot of partnerships, including American Atheists, happening. Ten years ago when we started, there was a lot of division, everybody had territories. Now I see people coming together, which is a great thing. Cooperation is increasing among the various secular groups, and atheism is advancing every day. We at Flash hope to achieve even higher goals. Maybe our dream can come true. As the president of Flash, I sure as hell hope so. I'll leave you with this. This is my aspiration. So aptly put about 150 years ago, man will never be free until the last king is strangled with the entrails of the last priest. Dennis Diderot. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to invite Chuck Miller up here. He's the, uh, for the Alabama Atheists. Well, I'm your American Atheist State Director for Alabama. I'm new to that position, but I've been around a little while. And I want to start by thanking Dave Silverman for holding the first RAM in Alabama and putting up a great billboard, you know they're all scams in Huntsville, Alabama. The results of that were amazing. There were existing groups in Alabama, uh, North Alabama Free Thought Association that was started by Blair Scott, it was one of the largest affiliates in the country. Um, I, I think Atlanta Atheists or, or Atlanta Free Thought uh, was and is bigger. Well, NAFA doubled in size as a result of that ramp. Not only that, there are now groups across the state. It seems like there's a new one forming every three months. Places like Calhoun County, Alabama, or a group that uh, I attend as often as I can in Marshall County, Alabama, in a town called Arab. Arab <laughs> makes Stark look like Paris in the Enlightenment. <laughs> this is a backward town, and that group is led by two awesome activists that many of you know, members of American Atheists, Robert and Mary Posey. 
So we've had tremendous results there in Alabama. But I don't want to just talk about Alabama. I would have been here whether I was American Atheist Director or not, for several reasons. I'm a fifth generation native Floridian. I'm a second generation Gator, and I know this is Gator country, and I'm tired of hearing Roll Tide all the time. And those people in Alabama are very religious, very religious when they come to the, when it comes to their football. I'm also here because I have always been a huge fan of free speech, and that's what we have here today. And I'm a huge fan of equality, and that's what we've done here today. Let people put their ideas out in the marketplace, see what sticks. Our ideas will stick, and they're going to stick, and they're going to prevail because people are realizing that their old superstitious ideas do not work. They do not work, they're counterproductive, they hold back progress. I think what American atheists stand for and all of you stand for is the way forward for humanity. <laughs> Religious people talk about raising the roof all the time. Well, that's great. That gets people excited. But I think raising the floor is more important. Now, I'm referencing a quote by Christopher Hitchens. And Christopher Hitchens, and I wish I had my notes in front of, in front of me, so this might be a bit of a paraphrase. But he said, give women some control over their bodies and reproduction, and the floor will rise. Well, there's a lot of things that will raise the floor. Anything that brings equality across the board to all people will raise the floor. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to work towards. Now, I'll shift, shift back to what's going on in, in, in Alabama for a minute. Um, next weekend, one of the oldest free thought events in the country is the AFA Lake Hypatia event. If you're considering doing anything on the 4th of July weekend and you don't have plans, I'd urge you to come and attend that in Talladega, Alabama. I know Ed Butner will be there. I'll be there. There'll be people across the, across the state of Alabama and the region there. And these kinds of events are very, very important. But something that's equally important in my mind is getting out in community action. Someone mentioned um, supporting LGBT events. That's very important. Political events, any kind of community event, because you'll find what I'm finding when you go out and speak to people there are hundreds and thousands of atheists in places like Alabama, in the panhandle of Florida, everywhere you can, where you would think that there are none, there are many. You just need to go out and talk to them. And you need to be out. That's the operative word. Thanks. Fifty years after Madeleine Murray O'Hare founded American Atheists, her words are finally inscribed permanently on public land. I'm very proud to have been at this event, and I'm really hoping that you're proud of being part of the Atheist Movement as we move forward to put these monuments out there to make sure that the public knows that this is not a Christian nation and that we are indeed a free nation 
and even more importantly, that atheists will exert our equality on this land if it's not granted to us. Thank you for watching this special two-part episode of American Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules. Hold your own mind.